This video shows you how to install Sage ERP 300 with Microsoft SQL Server Express version 2008 R2. This is intended to be an introductory video to help you install Sage ERP 300 as a demonstration. If you'd like to download the demonstration, you can find it at our website at dgginc.com. This is a brief video introduction to how to install the demonstration for Sage 300 ERP. You should have already downloaded a file called Sage 300 ERP NA .exe and you can't see the exe extension on this uh, client because they're hidden. So the first thing you want to do is double click on it and let it extract. This is a self extracting archive. Go ahead and press install and I'm actually extracting this to the desktop. Once the self extracting archive has extracted you'll see a folder on the desktop. Double click on the folder then you'll see a Sage 300 ERP directory. On the setup application, which you'll see I have highlighted, we need to right click and do run as administrator. If you fail to do this this way, the uh, installation will start, but eventually it will give an error message and fail to complete because you do not have proper installation privileges. We're going to accept all of these and just click through. Client ID. Enter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has to be seven digits. And your company name. Click next, and you can put anything in here. And click next. And then we're just going to be clicking through. Premium has the most functionality in it, so we'll install it for this demonstration. And I do recommend, this may come up with a directory under program files, I do recommend that you uh, put it in a directory other than the program files directory. And then we're going to select what we want. I would suggest you deselect the portal, since depending on the configuration of your machine it could interfere with existing software that's running on the web server. And we're going to select the ops. And under these, if you don't deselect one, you'll get an error message. I'm going to deselect the pervasive SQL and install the Microsoft SQL. And then if you want to install the payroll solutions, you can do that. I recommend that you do not do the payment processing at this point, since you'll need a Sage processing account in order to do that. And I would leave off the rest of the items on here. Just click Next and click Install. If you do happen to need .NET 4.0, it'll install it. It may install Visual C Runtime, which you're seeing right now. And several other products will install and configure. Depending on the configuration of your system, you might get an error message during the install process. If you do, I would suggest restarting the system and retrying the process. This particular error message is not a big deal, so we'll just OK through it. The system will then open a license screen, and you'll notice that we have some zeroed serial numbers. This will give us demo access for 30 days. We do need to come to the user screen and go ahead and create a license. Let's go ahead and do land pack version is the current version, edition, and we can put in one user. Let's just go ahead and put five users in, and that will give us a 30-day license. And we'll say finish. The next thing we need to install is a database, and as you saw earlier, you have a choice between Pervasive SQL and Microsoft SQL. And since there's a free version of Microsoft SQL, let's download and install it. If you go to Microsoft.com 
and search for SQL Server 2008 R2 Express Download, you'll come to this page. And we'll need to go to Downloads and click on SQL Server R2. And then find the edition that we need. In this case, SQL Express X64. I have a 64-bit operating system. And I just want to download and save. And notice it's going into Administrator Downloads. We'll hit Save again. And let that download. And this time I've gone back and searched for Management Studio 2008 R2. And here it is. And this time we'll go ahead and download it. And save it. Okay. So we get that started. We'll minimize all of this and go back to the actual installation. Now, in this case, we're just going to do a new installation. If you already have an instance of SQL Server on your machine, the installation will detect it. And in this particular case, on this particular machine, I already have an instance of SQL Server 2008, but not the R2 version. So it'll go through and check my server to make sure that everything's okay, or my computer to make sure everything's okay. You'll need to accept the license terms. If you get this this message, it's because one of the support files that was installed is a new file. And you'll go ahead and say OK. You'll close the SQL Server installation and then restart the machine, which I'm going to do at this point. At this point, I've restarted my machine, opened up Explorer to the downloads, and double-clicked on SQL Express again. And I've come to this screen where I want to do New Installation or Add Features. Remember, these are the options we want to select for the installation, which is basically everything. In the next step, SQL Server installation will show you if there's already, if there is already an instance on your machine, it'll show you the instance. And it will propose SQL Express, typically. I'm going to go ahead and call this Sage 300. And click. Now the system wants to know what I want to do about the passwords for the service account. I'm going to say use the same one and set it to the network service account. And then click Next. The system is now going to ask me if I what security mode I want to use. And I'm going to put the server in mixed mode. It asked me for a password. I'm going to use a password. I'll have to add an administrator account. I suggest you just add the current user and then do Next. I'm not going to choose to send the error messages. I'm just clicking through here. And it will then summarize the installation process. When the installation completes, you should see this screen. We'll say close. And we got this message. So we'll go ahead and restart again. OK, now that we have our SQL Server instance installed, we're going to go ahead and install the management console. This looks like this, Management Studio. I'll just double click it, say run. In the full version of SQL, you install the SQL Server, and you can install the Management Studio at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and say New SQL Server Standalone Installation. When we get to the options, you'll see that we don't have an option for installing SQL Server. And we get this screen. You can ignore this warning about the firewall. Okay, here we'll go ahead and just say perform a new installation. Next. 
accept the license terms, and we'll go ahead and install the management tools. And that's all there is to it. We can just next until we get to the end. Once everything is installed, we'll get this screen. We'll just do next and close. And now we're going to exit out of all of these items. Now that this has been done, we can come over to All Programs, go to Microsoft SQL Server, and run the Management Studio. Should be able to just enter localhost backslash or machine name backslash Sage 300. Once I'm connected, you'll see this screen. I want to open databases. And I also want to open security. First thing I'm going to do is come down here and right click on security and create new login. I'm going to use the login name Sage. I'm going to set the password to Sage and Sage, all caps. Turn off the password policy. No, this is not secure. This is not what you would want to do on a normal installation, but we're doing a demo. Server roles, I'm going to leave alone. User mapping, I'm going to leave alone for right now and say OK. Now I'm going to right click and create a new database. I'm going to call one database SAMCOM. That's going to be for the company file. And I'm just going to leave all the defaults just like they are. Right click. And I'm going to create a SAM sys. Leave all the defaults exactly like they are. Then I'm going to come back down here to the Sage user and go to user mapping. And I'm going to check off SAMCOM and DB owner and SAM sys and DB owner. All right, make sure you've done all of these steps. And now I'm going to minimize it, close this. And this time, I'll go to Sage and Database Setup. The default password is admin. And I see some companies here. If I edit this, you'll see that it's not a good setup. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all three of these. I'm going to create a new one. I need to do the system first. Server name is going to be Login is Sage and Sage. Password is Sam Sys. When I say OK, if I've done everything correctly, I get back to this screen. This is a company. The system database is the one I just created. Samcom is the name of this database. Server is the same. Now we have both of these set up. I'll go ahead and hit exit. This time I'm going to go back to Sage. And I'm going to go to Tools. And we're going to load the database. The password is still admin. I need to tell Sage where to find these files. So I'm going to click Set Directory and Browse. This is the directory, if you remember, that I installed everything in. I'm going to go down to SAM data and click OK. And then I see some options. So I'm going to load SAM sys. I'm going to load SAM inc into SAMCOM. And once both are loaded, I'll just press Cancel. At this point, I should be able to press the Start button. 
go to Sage 300 ERP, connect to SAMCOM. I'll get the error message that tells me I'm running a trial version and have to OK. And here I am in the application. If I take a look over at Accounts Receivable Customers, you'll see that we actually have some sample data. So that's a quick installation of Sage 300 ERP using the Microsoft SQL Express database.